Before we begin, it is important to understand the difference between vector and raster. Vector are a calculated path that are made up with these tiny little dots. If you understand the concept of this, it's going to help you understand the tool to manipulate it later on. And because the image that you see is in direct relationship to the dots that you created, when you scale it up and down without losing those dots or that path, you're not going to lose any quality to the things that you see. Whereas on a raster layer, when you scale it up, the software has to calculate the missing pixels and manually fill it in. And therefore, that's why the word pixelated comes in when you scale things up. And here's the disadvantage to vector. Vector cannot blend. Since they're a calculated path, the colors that you see will, is not going to be mixing together because the path are separate. Whereas the raster, they're made of pixels, so basically the colors can ease into each other due to the pixels being filled in. And for those who are completely new to the vector function in Clip Studio Paint, or if you came from Photoshop or Illustrator background and was used to looking for the pen tool drag and drop, just know that Clip Studio Paint, the vector is actually just a type of layer. So this is the raster layer that you would normally use for painting. This is the vector. It has a little cube on there that will be indicated like that icon right there. And now everything that you draw on here is going to be a vector path. The vector path can be enabled or disabled depending on your view. So view show vector path and you can just disable it anytime. And here comes the fun part. Since these are all path, their intersection can be calculated and the direction of where the dots are going are remembered. So if you go into the eraser tool that you would normally use, you will see that the vector eraser is enabled. It's not enabled on a raster layer, but it is enabled on a vector layer. And then you can use this, erase up to intersection, and then just clean up your line super, super easily. Or you can use this, erase the entire line and erase the whole thing. So when I drew my lines, I didn't have to worry too much about overshooting all of my lines since I can just use the eraser to clean them up really quickly. But if you're really, really, truly used to the way that raster lines worked and thought zooming in and erasing lines one by one <laughs> isn't really that big of a deal, then we can move on to the correct line width. The tool property for these subtools you're going to be using a lot. It has all the information you will need, thicken, narrow, scale up and down, fix width, and process the entire line. So thicken, for example, right now we want each stroke to add 2.5 pixels to the drawing, you can just use that to go over the lines that you want thicken. Or I would say, I like the I like the variation on that line, but I feel like overall it's a little too thin compared to the whole drawing. So I can use that uh, scaled up, um, like maybe one, let it process the entire line, and I just select that. So now it's going to go over that, but remembering the ratio between your thick and thins from before. Or if you're unhappy with the whole drawing um, and the line width works, you can use fix width, go over these, and then you can start all over. And the next thing I want to talk about is pinch vector line. This is really, really useful for you to move your lines around after you've drawn it. You can uh, I'll explain these a little bit later, but what you can do, effective range, see, I want to, I want the stroke to affect um, various dots that I already have on there. You can use it to drag the lines. So you don't have to make the line perfect the first time around, but you can just drag it around. So the reason why understanding that these paths are made of dots is very important is that a lot of people felt vector line was really unpredictable when it comes to using these tools. For example, when I was pinching the vector line, what I was really doing was dragging those little dots to somewhere else. But 
if you are using simplify vector line to make your line a little bit smoother, what it's really doing is actually deleting the dots in the path. And these dots have two types of colors. One is green and one is yellow. The green one has curve, the yellow has angle. And you can use control point, switch corner, and click on the dot. And you will see that it can switch between a curve or a corner. Connect vector line is something that I used a shocking amount of time during the production of this big piece. Um, what it does is really just cleaning up the messy lines that are intersecting with each other. So for example, this line I had, I had it come down here and then there's that corner I'm just really not happy about. So I played around with the setting, simplify connect line, and I just went over it and it's going to smooth that into there. So you can see the before and after. And again, if you're confused about what it's trying to do, always go under view and show vector path, and then look at the behavior of the dots. So what it was trying to do was actually connecting those paths and also deleting the extra little dots. Okay, break time. I hope that wasn't super confusing. I know I tend to get very technical when it comes to stuff like this, but to me, Clip Studio Paint's vector line art is very sophisticated and underutilized. A lot of people who tried using the correct line subtool tend to be turned off by it because they felt it was random and unpredictable. It's actually not. It's just um, us as an artist who are used to raster line art, it's really difficult to understand the concept between those dots actually affecting the look of your lines. Here's another example. I will have my dots enabled for view. Normally I don't, but this is just for tutorial purpose. Under redraw vector line, this allows you to redraw a line that you already put down. So for example, I want this line to really just look like this. You will see that what it did was actually auto-generated a bunch more dots that you really kind of don't need. So you can go in here and simplify vector line and use this to simplify, to delete those lines. And what it will do is it will try to maintain the curve that you already had and just put in dots in necessary path. Um, you can make it a little bit stronger, so it would delete more dots, but then that's deleting too many dots. Then you can go in control point, you can add, uh, add a control point, you can like add some there, add some there, and then you can basically just drag it. So this becomes very similar to uh, Photoshop or uh, Illustrator. Or you can just use uh, the pinch vector line, which I personally prefer to do, and then just pinch that entire line. And that's how you manipulate line art in Clip Studio Paint. Here's another huge advantage to vector lines. Right now you can see my lines are done with really smooth pen tool. What if I wanted to look like pencil? You can go into operation object you can select all the dots or all the path that you want and then you can go into brush shape and then change it to whatever brush shape that you want now it's pencil lines and then you can go back into say I want to um, correct line width I want these parts to be a little bit thicker to be a little bit more pronounced You can do that with ease. Here's a quick tip regarding brush shape. At first, you will find this drop down menu to be pretty lackluster or pretty limited. What you'll want to do is you'll want to go into your brushes and you can pick whichever brush that is your favorite. For example, if I want a rough pencil look, and then you will go into your subtool panel, enable the subtool detail, you will go into brush shape, and then you will register it to preset. Now this rough pencil look is going to show up in the drop down menu. So let's go into operation again, let's select, 
and you will see rough pencil become an option. The last tip is for traditional artists. This is a scan-in piece that I did of Micron on illustration board. I can go into edit, convert brightness to opacity. So this is going to leave only the ink line for me that I'm going to be converting into vector line art. Using convert brightness to opacity is going to leave you a raster layer with only your line. I put another white layer underneath just so that it's a little bit more obvious. And then you can right click on this raster layer, convert layer type to vector. And then you can you, you can play around with the vector setting. I choose it um I choose eight pixel in five correction because I always get the best result from there, but you can play around with that. And what this is going to give you is a vector layer with your raster layer still intact. So you disable your raster layer and that's now your vector path. And now I can do all the fun stuff like selecting that entire drawing, going to brush shape and then changing it to rough pencil look. And that is all for today. Thank you guys so much for watching until this point. I really appreciate it. I hope that helped shed some light on how to use the vector and also why I love it so much. Um, honestly, it does take a little bit of time to kind of get used to everything, especially if you've done it in raster all this time. I can totally understand like being afraid to kind of dive into all this. But seriously, like once you learn it, it just saves so much time and it's so flexible when it comes to improving your line art. So thank you guys so much. Let me know if you have any questions.